Having now covered scalars, which are zero-dimensional tensors, and vectors, one-dimensional tensors, in this video, we'll take it up another dimension and introduce matrices, or as some people prefer to call them matrixes, which are two-dimensional tensors. We'll cover the specifics of matrix notation, and then we'll dive into a hands-on code demo to create matrices in the key Python libraries for handling tensors, namely NumPy, TensorFlow, and PyTorch. A matrix is a two-dimensional array of numbers. In fact, I've taken the liberty of having a matrix on the screen here so that it's very easy to understand. This should be pretty straightforward, given how we've already covered zero-dimensional scalars and one-dimensional vectors. So matrices are just another kind of tensor where we have numbers in two dimensions. Um, let's talk about that in more detail. So we denote matrices in uppercase, italics, and bold, for example, x like this. So this is in contrast to vectors, which were also in italics and bold, but in lowercase. When we denote the dimensions of a matrix, height is given priority ahead of width in notations. So as an example, if the matrix X, like our matrix X here, has three rows and two columns, three rows, two columns, its shape is three, two, and we use round brackets around those two dimensions. The individual scalar elements of the matrix are denoted in uppercase italics only, as you can see here. So for example, the element in the top right corner of this matrix X would be x, notice it's unbolded, underscore one comma two. Again, we have that row column priority happening. So first row, second column. We can use colons to represent an entire row or column. So for example, the left column of this matrix X is represented by colon comma one, or the middle row of this matrix X is represented by two comma colon, again, using this row column notation to denote which uh, row or column we're representing. All right, now let's move on to a hands-on code demo. Okay, let's create the exact same matrix X as we had in the slides. So to create a NumPy array, uh, we can call a matrix also a rank two tensor, where rank zero is scalar, rank one is vector. And so to create a matrix in NumPy, we use the array method, and then we use nested brackets. So the outer set indicates where we break rows, and the inner set indicates the elements within each of those rows. Should be pretty straightforward what's happening here by cross-referencing the code that you type in and the output of matrix X here. Notice I'm using a capital X to represent this matrix, whereas earlier in the notebook when I was representing scalars and vectors, I was using lowercase x following the conventions I already described in the slides. We can find out what the shape of this matrix is. Okay, three rows, two columns, exactly as we talked about in the slides. And you can also ask for its size, which is the total number of elements in the array. So effectively, the number of rows times the number of columns in the case of a matrix. If we want to select a particular column, then we can use a colon, just like I showed you in the slides for the kind of standard notation. Note here that unlike in the slides, we're using a zero to represent um, the, the first column or the first row, depending on the case. So in the kind of standard mathematical notation, we index starting at one, but with uh, Python, as is common in computer science, we, we are zero indexed, so starting at zero. So I had to make that little translation. So to select the left column of our matrix X, this column here, we can specify I want all of the rows and then whichever column you'd like, in this case, the first one, and okay, it provides us with a vector tensor that includes all of the elements of that column. If we wanna select the middle row of the matrix, 
then we can say, okay, I want all of the columns and then specify our particular row. In this case, the second row, which has these elements five and 26. And if you wanna slice by index in more detail, you can say, okay, I wanna select from this starting point to this ending point with the column. So for example, by using zero to two and zero to two, we're selecting the first through the second row and the first through the second column, giving us this portion of the matrix. So you can play around with changing these values to make sure that you have a great sense of exactly how you slice elements of a matrix up. And you can also play around with adding rows or adding columns by playing around with uh, where we create this matrix here. Going beyond NumPy to PyTorch, it is essentially the same kind of way that we created the uh, NumPy array to represent a matrix. We're simply using the torch tensor method, just as we did for scalars and vectors earlier in this notebook. So all of the notation here should be pretty straightforward, and it even outputs in pretty much the same way as with NumPy. You can ask for things like the shape and get that back. It's very easy and Pythonic to perform any of these operations in PyTorch. Again, you can think of PyTorch as uh, very similar to the operations that you would apply in NumPy. And of course, then slicing by index happens in the same way as NumPy as well. So here we've selected the second row yet again. And in TensorFlow, it is also very easy here. So again, the same kind of nested square bracket notation for indicating exactly the shape of our matrix. In TensorFlow, we get a lot more outputs than we do with NumPy or PyTorch. Mostly we don't need them, but uh, you have them here now. You can ask things like the rank of this tensor, and it will return for you that it is a rank two tensor, which is the case for all matrices. Remember rank zero is scalar, rank one is vector, rank two is matrix. We can ask for the shape. Note that this is not as Pythonic or it's not quite like NumPy. So here for asking for attributes of our tensor, we have to use uh, the, the TensorFlow method formally here instead of just asking for an attribute um, of our NumPy or PyTorch object. That's fine, that's not too tricky. And slicing up our matrix, that's exactly the same as it was in um, NumPy or PyTorch. So here again, we're asking for the second row. And so we get a vector that represents that second row, the five and the 26. All right, there you go. Those are two dimensional tensors, more commonly known as matrices. Up next, we'll generalize our notation to cover tensors with any number of dimensions.